Hi, thanks for watching my very first video, and this is my very first robot. I've never built anything at all, even remotely like it, never done any kind of hardware, but I totally just kind of made this up as I went over the course of a few months, hacked it together out of wood and hot glue and dreams and hopes and prayers and seven servos. Well, I broke like six servos along the way, figuring out how to not break servos, but uh, it works. I'm super proud of it, and rather than just keep talking, let's show you it in motion. All right, go up, and we have power, but we don't think yet. Let's think. Three, two, one, flamingo brain. Ah, okay. All right, and she moves, and she talks, and she, I guess, bucks like a horse. Hey! Uh, yeah, so it's just really just a lawn flamingo that I cut up, you can see really cut up, and stuck a bunch of servo motors and wood and glue and did a lot of a lot of hoping and praying and messing up, but it's it's kind of a, an animatronic. So this terrifying bird has seven points of articulation. Uh, he can move his mouth. Hello, hello, hello. And you can see actually where I had to lobotomize him because the servo horn that controls his mouth was knocking up against his skull. Didn't kind of limiting the range of motion. So because this whole thing's kind of a, a hot mess anyway, I figured, well, just Take a notch out of the brain. Uh, and his head, this like the head, his head can move not quite as much as I want. That's something I want to fix, but it can go up and down. Uh, and then, boy, did I invest way too much time and over-engineered his neck because when I actually saw him move, I realized neck movements aren't that interesting. But he can go up, he can go down, all right. he can go left, and he can go right. And he can like basically break his neck the amount he can go. Ouch. That's a lot. That's an unnatural spot for a flamingo to put his neck. But he can do it. And then his sort of overall body, all the way up, pretty far down, and about 180 degrees left and right. And when you add it all up, you get a pretty darn convincing bit of flamingo action. So the mechanics of this whole situation, you know, the electronics, all of that, uh, obviously a lot of work, you know, and it turned out, okay, uh, definitely an amateur's job, but uh, that was working hard. Working smart is this side of the things, so how I'm actually driving and controlling this flamingo. So you can see, actually, if I grab this guy, I have a full-on 3D representation of said flamingo, and if you'll note, everything the flamingo is doing in real time is actually being driven by my computer. So you know the phrase, you probably don't know this phrase, but there's a phrase, a proper tool for a proper job. And boy, did I, I think, come up with the proper tool for controlling animatronic flamingos, and that's Unity. Uh, this is a, it's a game engine? You know, it's used for making games, but it's something that I've been using for, you know, geez, almost a decade. All I really did was I threw together maybe like, let's see, no, maybe five really quick animations. Like over the course of like two day, two minutes, I animated this robot in Unity with the uh, 3D approximation I made. And I threw together a simple blend tree and am animating the blend tree uh, parameters. And it's just blending some animations together, and that's what's causing, what's creating the movement. There's only maybe, I don't know, 40 lines of Arduino code. The vast majority of the logic is actually living in C-sharp with, uh, well, that's the animation controller. But, you know, just maybe, let's see, 300-ish total combined lines of C-sharp code, which is also, you know, barely anything. So the amount of Unity work done here to get this, the amount of unity work done to get this guy moving was minimal, but boy, is it effective. Because what I can do, I can control this guy in real time. And I can see, oh, well, you can't see that. And I can see in real time how, uh, how what I'm animating looks on the computer and how that translates to the, uh, to the flamingo robot. And then what's really cool is now, now I have a timeline-based way 
that I can scrub to animate this robot. Look, I'm scrubbing back and forth this particular animation. I'm like, you know what, actually, I think this one I made called Active 2, which is the sort of, oh god, don't peck it to death. Sort of, this is one of the more active animations I made. And I'm like, you know what, I want his mouth to open a little bit more at that frame. So, do that. Well, you can't see his mouth. So, we'll do, so we're going to mess with this keyframe. Open the mouth up there a little bit more. You can scrub it. See, oh, yep, yeah, okay. Because Unity is a real time game engine, and I have a real time representation of my flamingo, and I can do any of the. Oh, stop knocking your butt against the computer, dude. I can do anything that I would want to do with a real time game engine and a real time, you know, set of you know, 3D shapes, I can do to this real world Flamingo. That has been massively effective, like saved me a huge amount of time and effort and really unlocked the ability to do very interesting things with this robot. Oh, we lost her. We lost her. She broke. Well, shoot, she broke. I was going to fix this the right way earlier today, but then I was like, I'm losing light the golden hour. Better just hot glue it. And you know if you're hot gluing, you're doing things wrong. And this little piece of wood, total garbage. <laughs> I really need to remake this bit and not I just do a better job. So we're going to have to fix that. Hold please, caller. Well, I wasn't planning on doing any building in this video, but I think Federico Flamingo here kind of had another thought. So I've taken the servos out, uh, the problem guys, disconnected them from... Actually gives you an interesting way you can kind of see this pulls here, this servo pulls, it does the head this way, the other one pulls this way, and does the head this way. I don't know if that's interesting or not, but that's how that works. So my problem was I had just a little piece of wood here holding both those guys in, and it's not enough. I need, I need support on kind of both sides, not just on the one side. So I'm going to cut some wood. You may be also noticing that there's kind of fancy wood for a not so fancy flamingo and that's because ooh, look at this garbage pile uh just moved into a new house a couple months ago and we're uh, putting in new floors and that left me with a lot of scrap <laughs> wood flooring so this robot is like i don't know 12 percent hardwood flooring just <laughs> you know make do with what you got so i gotta cut up this guy and get some slices inside of him That is not going to work. <laughs> That's not going to work. And nothing to attach this to. Hmm. Hmm. Here is the plan. So I am still going to do uh, wood on both sides and mount her in there. But then because this side has nothing to grab onto, I'm just going to Peter put a uh, Peter put a put a. I'm going to put a piece of wood. Peter picked a peck of pickled peppers across, and. Yeah, that should mount her just fine. I think we got it. I think we got it. Yeah. We got it. This is not great. Well, I mean, it's kind of great. <laughs> it's doing the job. Look at that. Nice and firm. And now I get to just stick this right here. I'm able to get a, well, two screws in here to hold this whole operation in. Everything will be well. And all the people will be happy. And Whole achieved. Ooh, plastic dust in my eye. Well, I didn't want to be 80 anyway. All right. So that's going to wrap it up for me. Sorry about the technical interlude as we fixed this. I can do that too, you know. As we fixed this uncooperative little critter. You know, I put a lot of effort into kind of giving all these points of articulation, and I did a stupid thing. 
I didn't even look at how flamingos move until after the whole darn thing was built. And so when I looked online, I saw flamingos do this funny little, like, kind of deal. And he can't do that. He can only move his head up and down and up and down. So that's probably the next step for him. From there is, so I have this thing called Elite Motion, and it uses IR sensors to detect your hands, and it has this whole algorithm to build a model of your hand and recognize gestures. So like it knows like putting your fingers together and that kind of thing. Uh, so this is such a wild, feral critter, uh, case in point, uh, I, want, I can train it. I can basically give it hand motions like you would give a dog, like sit, stay. I don't, I mean, it's going to stay. I don't know what sit quite yet means, but maybe, I mean, not maybe, I could have it follow my finger. I could have, oh, yeah, see, it needs to be trained. It is a little too wild. So that's that. That's sort of head, better head movement. And then uh, from there, training it. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed seeing my flamingo. What just broke? What just broke? <laughs> it broke again.